Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop and today we're going to be continuing our series on VBA or Visual Basic for Applications. And this, is, this video is going to be part three on record sets. So let's go ahead and go back into our database here. And if you recall in our last video we set up the backward and forward buttons along with our save button. But now we're going to go ahead and add a new button and a delete button so that users can add new records and delete the current records that they're looking at. Okay, so first let's work on this new button. I'm going to go to the on click event for my new button and go into the code. And there is a function on a record set called add new. Now an add new, uh, when you're trying to add a new record to a record set, you have to understand the only time that this add new is actually going to apply to the record set is after you've completed the update command. Okay, so even though I'm running an add new, it's just kind of in memory. It's not committed yet to the database until I run the update function. Okay, so you need to keep that in mind. The add new does not run until we do, or the add new does not actually operate and actually add a new record until the update function is run also. So it's the same type of tandem that we see here with the RS edit and RS update. You need to add the new record, fill in the values into those, you know, assign the values to the appropriate points in your record set, then run the update command. Okay, so add new and edit are very, very similar in how they function. Now that means that I can't necessarily do this add new when the user clicks on the new button. Instead, I need to do something else. And let's think about this from the user perspective just for a second. When the user clicks on the new button, what they should probably see is that these values up here all blank out. That should basically, you know, if you get a blank form by clicking on a button, that usually indicates to most people, well, I must need to go ahead and fill in this information because now I'm looking at a new record. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. We're going to go ahead and go to the onClick event and we're going to go ahead and change all of the values and me.txt id equal to a blank string, then me.txt first name equal to a blank string, me.txt last name, and me.txt username. Okay, so we're going to change all of the values in each one of those text boxes to a blank string. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And that's all that does. Okay, it just changes those values. Now, what you need to remember though is that even though we change all of these to blank strings, the cursor is still pointing here in our record set. So technically, we're, the record set is still looking at this Steve Bishop record, okay? So we need to be very careful here. We need to make sure that our procedures are correct. The procedure that we want is that when the save button is clicked, okay, that is the time where we are actually going to do that RS dot add new, okay? Now, what we need to do is we need to figure out a way, then, how do we tell whether or not we need to do an RS edit or to do an RS add new? Well, lucky for us, there's a kind of a shortcut that we can take here because of some of the properties that we've set up on our form. Remember how in this ID text box here, we set the locked property to yes. That means the user cannot go in here and change the value on their own. The only way that the value inside of this text box changes is if the user either clicks on this button, this button, or this button. Okay. If the user clicks on either the backward or the forward buttons, they're changing back and forth between records, which is going to populate a value up here into, the text, in, into this text box. But if the user clicks on the new button, we just deleted anything that might be in there, and so we know it will be blank. And since the user has no way of changing that, when the user goes to click on save, we can check to see, is that text box blank? If it is, then go ahead and do an add new. If the user, if, if this text box is not blank when the click, user clicks on save, then that means that they are currently looking at that record and they made some changes on that record. And so when they click on the save, they want to change, make save, they want to save the changes to that specific record. We can use this all to our advantage. So let's go ahead and go back to the on click event. Let's go ahead and do an if 
rs, or I'm sorry, if me.txt id, so we're checking to see if the id field is equal to a blank string. If it is, then go ahead and do an rs.addNew. If it is not, so we're going to do else, then do an rs edit, And then that's the end of our if statement. Okay? So follow along here one more time, because I want to make this absolutely crystal clear how this is working. We're kind of taking a shortcut here, but you need to do stuff like this in order to make your access work efficiently. When the user clicks on the new button, whatever the current record is that they're looking at will have all of the values changed to blank. I cannot go up here and change the value. I'm, pr I'm pressing the f number 5 key here. I cannot change the ID value. I can only change down here, right? So we can take advantage of that so that when the user fills in the information and then clicks on the save button, we can look to see, well, is there anything inside of this blank string, inside of this ID text box? If there is not, then we know that the user must be adding a new record. If there is a value, then we know that the user has changed one of these uh, values inside of this, so when they click on save, then it just goes back and saves it. Okay? So let's go ahead and go back into our... Um, let's go. Actually, we're all set up there. We've wired that all up, so let's go ahead and view this, and now we'll go ahead and click New. I'm going to go to the first name, and let's go Don Johnson. Okay? Johnson. All right, any of you Miami Vice lovers will recognize that name, right? Or maybe maybe Nash Bridges. Some of you guys might know Nash Bridges. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and save that, and you can see... After I click on the Save button, we've now got a new user here in our list, D. Johnson. And if I go rerun my query here, you'll see Don Johnson is now in there. Okay, so that's great. We've got our new user added. Perfect. Okay, so let's go and work on this Delete button. I'm going to go into my design view here, and I'm going to click on the delete, go to on click, go to our code builder here, just like we normally do, get our subroutine set up for our delete click event. And really, this is pretty straightforward to delete a record. You just go rs.delete, okay? And whatever the current record is that the cursor is pointing at will be deleted, okay? So when the record is pointing at any one of these records and you click on that delete button, it goes away. That's exactly what we're looking for, right? So let's go ahead and go find Mr. Don Johnson, click on the delete button, and uh-oh, no current record. Well, shoot, what's going on here? Well, if you recall, one of the bugs that we have in our application that I have not yet addressed is that the user can continue to click on the forward button even when they are at the end of the file we kind of need to do some changing of that. We we don't want them to be able to continue to move to the next uh, over and over and over again. Instead, what we need to do is we need to make sure that the record set is never pointing at the end of the file. Okay? So after this, if, if it's not at the end of the, of the end of file, then it moves next. Okay, well, if that move next causes it to go to the end of the file, we need to add an additional check to make sure that they aren't at the end of the file. If they are at the end of the file, we need to move them back to the previous record. Okay, so we actually need to do something like this. If rs.eof, then rs.move previous. And if. Okay, so that may seem a little funky, but think about this for a second. If I'm not at the end of the file, that means I'm. if I get all the way to the last record here on my record set, I get to Don Johnson, okay? I'm not yet at the end of the file. So when it does this check, I'm not at the end of the file. I'm looking at Don Johnson. So I'm still allowed to do this move next, and that then puts me at the end of the file, okay? So if that's the case, then actually what I want to do is, if I do end up getting to the end of the file, and then I try to go run that delete on Mr. Don Johnson, well, I'm not on his record anymore, even though I still have the values showing up here in the text box. And I need to account for that in my programming, okay? I hope I'm not losing anybody here, but just make sure that 
you do this little check here to make sure that if you're at the end of the file uh, and you always want the cursor to be pointing at least at some record, then you need to go ahead and do this RSEOF, and then I'm going to go ahead and add also a refresh of the data. Okay, so just make sure that you never actually leave the cursor at the end of the file. We also need to do the same thing here with the beginning of the file. We need to do if rs.bof then rs.move next and then uh, oops refresh data and then end if. Okay, so we're doing both on the end of file and beginning of file, and that will essentially ensure that the user can never, no matter how many times they click on that back and forward button, they will never actually be at the end or at the beginning of the file. So now, let's go ahead and try this again. Let's go back here to Don Johnson. Again, I can't go back. And you'll also see, now that I click on the back button, it works properly. I don't have to double click. I don't know if you guys saw that, but um, when we wired up these things, we had to click twice in order to get off of each record. Well, now we're actually sitting properly. These buttons are working correctly now. So now that I'm at Mr. Don Johnson, I can go ahead and click on the delete button. Okay, great, but he's gone. But we didn't really quite get any sort of indication. We didn't really double check. I mean, what if somebody accidentally clicks on the delete button, but they didn't really mean to, right? So I can go to Joe Lyons here. I click on the delete. Um, that didn't do me any good, right? So what we want to do is we need to make sure that there's some sort of check with the user to make sure they actually want to go ahead and delete that. And then we probably actually also want to add some functionality here that when the user clicks on the delete button, this list box repopulates. So let's go ahead and finish this up here. Let's go to the delete button, go to the on click. We've got the delete here. What we can do is we can pop up a little message box. We can do, I'm going to make a dim of message as string. And we're going to do message is equal to, are you sure you want to delete this employee question mark okay then we're going to do if message box message okay we're going to pass in the message variable here and you see that we have all these different options of what message what type of message box to display the one we're looking for is vb dot uh, is vb yes no okay that's going to pop up a little message box that allows the click user to click either a yes or a no then we're going to go ahead and title it, are you sure, question mark. Actually, let me just go ahead and make that all lowercase. Okay. And let's go ahead and end that message box. And we can say, when the user clicks on either a yes or a no, the message box will return a result of something. And in our case, we can check to see if VB yes was, collect, was selected. Then we can go ahead and do the delete. Okay, so we're just going to double check. Are you sure you want to delete this employee in a yes, no checkbox? If the user selects yes, then go ahead and run the delete. But then also we wanted to add, if you, don't re if you, if you can recall, we wanted to run that little function that refreshes this list box. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We want to refresh the employee list box. So let's copy that. Go to our delete button here. And if they deleted, refresh that employee list box. Let's save it. And now let's take a look at our form and see how it all works. Okay, so there's our three users that we've got left because of all the deleting and adding we've done. Let's go ahead and add a new. Let's go ahead and do Debbie Johnson. D Johnson. And click Save. And now we have D. Johnson in our list. Okay, so did we goof something up here? We might have. Oh, well, I'm just going to leave that as an artifact. Everything should be working fine here. I may have, I may just need to do a quick little refresh of the whole text box. But you guys get the point here. Okay, um, you guys could probably go and debug this yourself here and figure out what's going on. As a matter of fact, that's probably a good little test. Let's see if you guys can go figure out why that was happening. Okay. Anyway, um, we're going to move on here and. Again, if you guys have any questions or if you'd have some sort of subject matter that you'd like me to go ahead and cover, please feel free to send that message to me uh, and put it in my inbox and I will be happy to address it if I can.